So we've got uh, myself, I'm a clinical, assistant clinical professor. I actually work it out at one of our uh, satellites, and it's myself and a medical oncologist there. Um, and this is really kind of very much a collaborative project um, with Steve, and you guys will all see probably like a little <laughs> reference to several of the other uh, things that are being presented uh, today. Don't have any disclosures other than I consider our patients and our uh, treatments art. Um, a quick <laughs> overview, really what is radiation treatment planning? I would say that's the bulk of what we do. Uh, we have kind of a project plan that we're going to describe for you and some just very uh, preliminary data. Since it is an educational talk, I want some objectives. At the end of my talk, I would like you to be able to define treatment planning. I would like you to appreciate current limitations, and I would like to intrigue and excite uh, the learners. Read my slides. Hopefully we don't have that. So um, this is kind of where we get treatment planning definitions, kind of what is the educational goal. So the ABR has a study guide for medical physics for radiation oncology, has treatment planning, ICRU, beam-related biology, some special procedures information. Um, I think there seems to be a general push. Um, there's also a nice um, physics uh, core curriculum subcommittee in 2015. They updated their physics core curriculum. They actually have a published um, set of 56 hours of didactic and broken down into that is theoretically some of the treatment planning. However, there's a missing component of treatment planning, I would argue, that our treatment planning should have both a physics component and a clinical component. And so this is what we do. This is uh, the older workforce data because the new uh, stuff hasn't come out quite yet. But average number of patients is 23. Um, and we work about 50 hours per week. Residents, you work a little bit more. And we spend about 80% of our time either thinking about patient care, designing treatment plans, implementing the treatment plan, or actually participating specifically in treatment planning. And residents, similar, uh, about 75%. So the two areas here this is kind of that like talking to patients designing treatment planning specifically working with the design um, attendings tended to do more administration and residents get some didactic um, I might also suggest that it'd be nice to have as an attend now as an attending particularly a junior attending I'd love to have some of that time as well so the basic project plan is treatment planning and dosimetry are such an integral part of our practice in radiation oncology but the majority of time is dedicated to physics, biology, and the treatment of those disease sites. Um, then didactic time is just constrained, I think several themes here, that um, it results in informal dosimetry and informal treatment uh, planning education. And graduating residents have to have a strong foundation because they have to feel comfortable that they're choosing appropriate radiation treatment plans and tr safely treating patients. So we propose the development um, of a model uh, based dosimetry and treatment planning uh, curriculum. It's more standardized. I thought this was um, a much better said than myself. It's about a 50 page document out of the Lancet in 2010. Um, basically, it's a call to action saying our current education model is now outdated. We've been doing it for the, like, the last 70 years. The next generation of learners needs the capacity to disseminate vast amounts of information and extract and synthesize. And how do we help? learners do that and we've got to get rid of professional silos interdisciplinary team is how we practice medicine that is also how we should trade in medicine is their suggestion shared resources as opposed to silo resources and um, exploiting that was an interesting word choice but exploiting IT um, so background just a specific little background for myself I found my hardest transition point from resident to attending was the fact that I had to approve those plans and how many times can I ask the dosimetrist to replant? Um, that was hard. And so I put in um, radiation treatment planning and you get about 300 results. If you filter through them, filter and put add resident in there, you get 10. If you eliminate the lovely work for the medical student curriculum and e-contour, you get one study. One study is 2005 study about resident education as it relates to intensity modulation which is the last big implemented change. Um, so there's a lot of hinting of needs utilized, so kind of expanding the specific uh, search. Several studies report kind of 
residents feel that there's insufficient time with patient, new patient consults, treatment planning, and portal image validation. I feel like I remember in residency having these exact same thoughts and having attendings say these exact same things. And this be a point at Emma because I feel like got those things said to me. Um, CV chop, I think Dan are kind of pointing me in this direction, but what we don't really have a great formal way of how we train residents to look at plans. Um, so this is a published documentation. It's just kind of an acronym that says, here's the highlight things that we're taking a look at. Arrow has launched meat and treatment planning and radiation uh, oncology self-directed dosimetries in the bed ed port. Um, and so there's all these kind of things that say, hey, somebody is thinking that we need this stuff. Um, and so we know that simulation and didactic-based approaches kind of from the medical uh, student curriculum, the e-contouring studies, um, and then also module-based uh, studies like for GYN and Reiki. Um, and then we have several studies, uh, including kind of a resident, chief resident and program director studies that suggest residents feel like they want more didactic. <clears throat> and so, Current limitations, we have this kind of apprentice-based model that relies heavily on the willingness of one person to teach those residents. And so sometimes you could luck out and you get someone great, sometimes you don't. Driven from that initial need, we have a lot of interprofessional relationships. We work so closely with those dosimetrists. If you trust a dosimetrist, you can review plans super fast. If you don't trust a dosimetrist, you are digging through every nuance, looking for where the mistakes are. So new technology, it's also fantastic, one of the reasons to join radiation oncology, but it's hard to implement because you have a new technology and then the learner is also the teacher. Um, and so how do you keep up to date? Um, and this is development of IMRT, and the resident study basically demonstrated that the residencies were implementing it, but the didactic was all being given by physics staff, which may not be that dissimilar from programs even now. Um, and then there's also kind of concerns, which is where kind of I entered in with our residents. Um, and there's this modern workflow, which allows a lot of remote access, but a resident could end up seeing a patient consult. They miss the sim. They do their contours. They don't get a chance to review them with the attending. They don't get a chance to see the dosimetry magic. They don't get a chance to see the attending approve it. Then the physics check. Then you get verification at the treatment machine that doesn't necessarily have to have a resident. And then they see them again on the first under treat visit. That's again the worst case scenario, but that's kind of where we are. And so, um, the initial sample survey, and then we want to kind of do a needs-based uh, assessment, and then have our treatment planning curriculum a pilot of three to four institutions, very similar to the model for our uh, medical student uh, curriculum. So we had 18 survey responses, kind of in a prelim released by um, ARA, housed in a red cap and good diversity of residents. Um, take the survey. Are you getting any formal teaching? Basically, 80% said no. And then of the patients, uh, of the residents that are getting some training, it seems to be pretty limited. And then, um, what are they teaching? It's mostly obser observation or independent treatment planning. How comfortable? At least you're feeling comfortable with our treatment planning systems. Um, and you use a standardized approach to evaluate plans. So it's impressed. About 80% of the folks said that they did feel some. And comfort level evaluating plans. As you get older residents, you hope that that goes up um, and then it's kind of the meat of the last kind of conclusion points for reasons for pursuing this more in depth are this I would oh, oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's close to time okay so so um, contour review we're doing a pretty good job there's a lot of residents that are getting all those cases reviewed this is not so good this is a chance to review it before the attending reviews it this is even worse. This is, do you get to review the plan that's approved with the attending? One person is saying 100%. So, um, we'll skip those through. But my conclusion is that radiation treatment planning, how to treat the art, don't know yet, but I think we should work on it together.